to say, if you have a question during the show, we want to hear it. Your input is a big part of what makes the show great and we thrive on your energy and insight. Whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, an opinion you just have to share, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make absolutely sure your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easy way to do that. Use the super chat feature. Use the super chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your super chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air. And it's also uh, a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love. And we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit that super chat button. And let's keep the show as interactive and exciting as possible. And if you prefer, you can also go to the gsmcpodcast.net with to tip, donate, and leave a comment or question there. We couldn't do what we do without your amazing support, and we're so thankful to have you as part of our community. We have to start off, though. Oh my god, slight technical difficulties here. Ta-da! Pochettino is officially, 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 officially announced. Um, it's been in lingering, it's been in limbo for a, a very long time now, a few weeks now. We had the initial reports coming out from some major out uh, from some major journalists, some major insiders in or in around the US soccer camp that this hiring has been completed. Pochettino has agreed to be the manager, but it wasn't officially announced by the U.S. soccer. Mauricio Pochettino had some negotiate, not negotiate, yeah, sort of negotiating to do with Chelsea to release him out of that contract that he was in because he was still under contract at Chelsea. Um, so there was a little bit of a standoff there, but it looks like that has been now officially sorted out and the u.s soccer federation announces him in u.s soccer fashion 20 minutes before the game before the u.s tech on new zealand um in the international friendly which was another disappointing result for the u.s a 1-1 draw we won't go too much into that we'll get we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the segment but it, it's finally been done uh, uh, I, I was reluctant to continue to speak about Mauricio Pochettino over this last week or so because it wasn't official and we were still at that same point now over and over again. But now the real work begins. He will be the manager come this October window where the U.S. men's national team will take on Panama and Mexico. Um, they'll take on Panama and Austria. Not Austria. And now in um in Austin, uh, at the Q2 Stadium, then they'll go on to take on Mexico in Mexico. It's an away game at the Estadio Acron in um, in Guadalajara's venue. The stadium is the Guadalajara Stadium. Um, it, the game will be played in Zapopo- Zapopan, right outside of Guadalajara. Um, and, you know... It, it, that's a good test for the U.S. men's national team playing away to Mexico. Now, obviously, the U.S. had this sort of September international window under Mickey Vargas where they had two really disappointing results, losing to Canada and then uh, in, in a very bad fashion and then dropping points late at the end to New Zealand. Now the real work begins with Pochettino comes in. All eyes, you know, this is going to be a shift in culture that's going to occur at the, on this team. We saw the shift in culture with Canada, you know, with the, when they had their interim manager, where they had their struggles in qualifying for the Copa America. They had to play a playoff to just get into Copa America. Then Jesse Marsh gets in with a month left till the tournament begins, and he uses friendlies against the Netherlands and France and Europe to sort of prepare the team. And they go on to, you know, they go on to make the third place match to, you know, they have a semifinal appearance at the Copa America and 
honestly, they were they were extremely unlucky to not get third place, um, the, conceding that very late goal to Uruguay, and then they eventually um, went on to lose um, to lose that game in in penalties. So yeah, obviously extremely extremely disappointing there, but there was progression. Now the U.S. want to see this sort of progression with Mauricio Pochettino. Look, Pochettino is a manager that we U.S. soccer fans could only have dreamed of whenever Greg Berhalter was fired. This is a sort of manager, the caliber. Now with Pochettino in as the U.S. men's national team coach, you know, there's not much managers that you can say, you know, have a better manager than us. There's not much teams. We certainly have the best manager in the region. And that includes Jesse Marsh, who continues to go on and on and on about the U.S. Soccer Federation. Um, you know, it includes Jesse Marsh, you know, Javier Aguirre, you know, um, Steve McLaren taking over for Jamaica. We have the best in class in terms of CONCACAF. And we probably, when you, talk, when you consider all the international managers in terms of their pedigree, you know, we probably have... In terms of what accomplishments and, you know, total CV, we probably have the best international manager. Now, obviously, he's not experienced on the international stage. And you have managers like Lionel Scoloni, that's won now two Copa Americas, a World Cup. You have managers like Luis de la Fuente that took Spain and won the European Championship with them in dominant fashion and playing some really, really good football. So there's also other brilliant, brilliant managers and managers that have actually been successful on the international stage. But in terms of total CV, there's not much managers that could match up with Mauricio Pochettino, which, you know, which as a U.S. soccer fan excites me. Uh, um, Obviously, this is a team that's now going to work extremely hard. Um, You know, they're going to be put to the sword. You know, there's going to be a lot of fitness improvement in this team. We're going to play with a faster tempo. With uh, We're going to play with a faster tempo. We're going to move the ball quicker. We're going to get numbers forward, and we're going to really take the game by the scruff of the neck and go to win the game rather than try to lose the game, rather trying to prevent losing. We're going to go and try to win, which is going to make it fun to watch. We have some dynam- dynamic players that Pochettino is going to take advantage of. I'm talking Christian Pulisic, Timothy Weah, Valerian Balogun, you know, uh, Haji Wright. I think Haji Wright is going to be an important piece with his verticality. I think Pochettino is going to fancy his abilities, being flexible as well, can play that number nine position, can play winger position. I think Tyler Adams is going to be very pivotal in the work rate that he gives in midfield. We know those are the sort of players, you know, you know, we saw Gallagher, what he was, you know, the importance of him at Chelsea the year Pochettino, last, this past season with Pochettino. Tyler Adams is going to be important, especially when you look at Johnny Cardoso and the performance he had um, this past game against um, um, against Canada, you know, giving away a mistake that led to a goal. And overall, there's going to be a culture change and a culture dynamic change. We also, in Pochettino, we get a, an astronomical upgrade over Greg Berhalter. This is a manager that we're not going to have to second guess his decisions in terms of his squad. You know, he's not going to... Because look, there's a, a lot riding on here for Pochettino. There's a lot riding on here. There's some pressure for Pochettino here because you're taking a sort of step down to manage the U.S. men's national team, and you need to perform well because, you know, he, I, I wouldn't say failed at, P, uh, 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 at PSG, but it wasn't exactly a lightning success, and then at Chelsea only had that real year. Again, I wouldn't really say failure, but it wasn't a success at the same time. This needs to be a success because if you're looking at three straight roles in which he's ha- he hasn't been he, you know, hasn't really been successful, you know, it's going to be hard for him to make that jump back into a big team right away. He might have to, you know, take a step down in club football to climb back up, which I think Pochettino is really not trying to do. I think he's looking at this as a sort of 
way to get a home World Cup, to make the best out of this team, to maybe also increase his name in America, get sponsorships potentially. He might be looking at that. And then use this as a sort of stepping board to get back into the top clubs of inter- of, uh, of club football. So, so the um, there's going to be a little bit of pressure on him um, to get this team playing some really, really good football, to get this team appealing to watch, to make this team a formidable outfit at a home World Cup where, you know, the, essentially the goal is to make a team, to create a team that, you know, other countries fear going up against, especially with them being the home team, the home team at the World Cup, um, um, packed stadiums, you know, it's it's really it's gonna be a great great deal and a lot of these sort of players that have been complacent that have had a weak mentality at the u.s it's time for them to step up or get out because pochettino is not going to be dealing with we already speak about a depression that's on pochettino he's not going to be here ready he's not here to deal with some of the bs that this u.s soccer uh that this u.s men's national team has put on display over the past um, past couple of months um, the discipline issues you go back to Sergino Dest in the in the, in the training that he game lashing out at the referee and then you see Tim Weah lashing out the disciplinary issues in, within this team the lack of intensity and sometimes getting outworked by teams as we saw against Canada um, you know the weak mentality being able to close out these late game moments. You saw that Panama, um, the weak mentality of not being able to handle go down to 10 men. You saw against Uruguay, not being able to get that goal. Um, not, you know, not taking the next step in terms of, you know, under Greg Berhalter, not having a single quality win, not a win that uh, in a game that you're not expected to win. That's something I'm expecting huge, huge improvements for, and we're all excited because now it is officially official October. He will be the manager, and um, I'm very, very excited um, to see this new look U.S. Men's National Team because I think this sort of ha- bringing a Mauricio Pochettino in is the sort of spark needed because I think what Canada got with Jesse Marsh, we will get probably even more because I think Pochettino is a better manager than Jesse Marsh and I think these caliber of players on this U.S. men's national team is more talented than the players that can, that Jesse Marsh has with Canada. So I'm looking very, very forward to this next sort of cycle uh, for the U.S. men's national team. You know, with the U.S. men's national team over the past few years, it's always been a sort of numbness knowing that, the, you, know, you know, the international window's coming up or the Copa America's coming up. Use, leading up to the 2016 Copa America, and yes, this is probably, probably because I was younger and um, I had a little bit like more, you know, blinded fandom to me. I was hugely, hugely excited entering that Copa America. This 2018 Copa America, or not 2018, 2024 Copa America, not much excitement for me because, you know, for me, I, I, uh, for me, I already knew in my head what was going to happen, and it didn't actually end up happening. It was worse. But what I thought is we'd squeak by Bra- Bolivia and Panama. We would probably lose to Uruguay. We'd finish second place and lose to Brazil or Colombia but um but you know it was even worse we didn't even get out of the group which was probably needed to happen and I have to say that Timothy Weah punch or push no it was a punch it was a punch that's gonna go down in U.S. soccer history for maybe one of the greatest moments in U.S. soccer history because that was the moment that Greg Berhalter was fired, was 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 released of his duties as the U.S. men's national team job. Because, look, if they, got it out, if they got out of the group stages and they make it around the 16, I think the U.S. Soccer Federation are sticking with Greg Berhalter. Despite, you know, even if we were to get trounced by, you know, Colombia or Brazil, I think they would have stuck with him. 
Now Pochettino being in, we have a sense of excitement and I'm looking forward to games. So that's also, you know, a huge incentive into bringing in a guy like Mauricio Pochettino.